So when did you get involved in dogs and what made you lean towards the bully direction? In 1987, how long ago was that? We got our very first dog, her name is Kena. Kena was a big, thick bone, uh, black pit bull. And when we got her a couple of years later, we got Seth. Now Seth, to me in my mind back then was the biggest pit bull I'd ever seen in my life. And Speaking to my brother, who had those were his graduation gifts, found out that they weren't no bigger than about 100 pounds, 110 pounds. But they were still the biggest dogs that I've seen back then in the late 80s. Okay. So uh, moving forward, both of us went to the same school. We both went to college together. And uh, from that mm. point, he started breeding Kina and Seth. So I got a dog off of the litter, and she looked just like her dad. and did a, a few uh, litters. One of the things along the way that I had a learning lesson with is uh, how to breed and the, the signs of struggle with a dog during actual birth. Right. I've had a lot of screw-ups back in the late 80s and early 90s, and even the early 2000s, to get to where I am now because when you have stillborns and you have puppies that kind of get in the birth canal and they ruin it for others. I've lost an entire litter before. That was a learning experience. I said, I'll never let that happen again because once I saw the puppy trying to come out and the, the, the uh, placenta was already breached, we had a breached puppy, um, we dealt for a few hours before I even knew that she actually couldn't push the dog out. Mm -hmm. So th this was in 2002. Right. So we had to take it to the emergency vet. By the time they pulled all of those puppies out, those are, those are the largest puppies I've ever seen, and I lost the entire litter. Oh, really? That sucks, man. I'm sorry to hear that. So Marlin's dogs, Dark Dynasty Canines, what appealed to you about those dogs versus other bloodlines? Well, um, that was the very first one that caught my eye. Yeah. Um, it, when I I, I would my last dog that I had was in 2005. I was without a dog for 13 years in 2005 until I got Marley and Sasha from Marlon Grinning on, uh, in September of 2018. Mm -hmm. I, I was done with dogs. I, I was totally out of the game, you know, was trying to get with the sheriff department, state police and all that other stuff. So I was real, very interested at that time with moving in more or less law enforcement and, you know, the waking up in the morning, feeding the dogs. It was, it's a lot that you take on when you have a pet, you know, you're no longer living your life. And I didn't have any children at that time. A hundred percent. My, my particular uh, stand on that was no dogs, no waking up in the morning. I could wake up whatever time I wanted to. I was free. Mm -hmm. Towards 2016, 2015, I started getting kind of getting that urge back again. And I remember I was looking on Facebook. It was this big old pit bull overseas and I knew I did, couldn't get access to him. So I said, oh, man, if I can get a dog like that, it just caught my eye. It was not Hulk. I think it was in Europe somewhere. So when uh, I finally Googled the big pit bull or whatever, here comes this Hulk dude. And I'm like, what is this? Wow, that dog is big as him. And that's how I got and, and first came across Hulk. And it was in right around 2015, I want to say. But I kept following him. And next thing I know, uh, I started seeing him on Good Morning America, Whoopi Goldberg's The View. Uh, start seeing him in a different show. I'm like, this dog has some some legitimacy, like a celebrity status. Why is why do they have a dog on the view? Well, there he was. So it was easy to try to get a dog from that versus trying to look from anywhere else. I didn't care about anybody else's kennel. I wanted a puppy from that dog. Mm -hmm. I had a vision. I said I wanted a dog. Her name was going to be Sasha. So with that being said, you know, I went on my little journey and Lisa Grinnell was the very first person I had contact with. I had contact with Lisa off and on a couple of months. And I told her, I say, I want to come out there and see Hulk. You know, before I give you all of this extra money, I gave her a down payment. I said, before I give you any more money, I want to fly out there and get a chance to see him in person. She had no problem. I went out there. I took a 14 hour trip, a flight, 
four hour round trip from the airport back and forth up in the mountains where they live at. They live up in the mountains up in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. So I finally got there and the very first dog that walked out was not Hawk. It was Stella. Stella was a 140 pound uh, pit bull that came out of that house and I, <laughs> I'm a breeder. So when she walked up to me, they didn't have a leash on. I'm like, okay, here we go. Well, we got this big dog running up to me. And uh, yeah. from that point, I captured everything on a uh, video. Mm. And there's a particular conversation that me and Marlon had. You know, he said, well, what are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for a girl. And so um, I keep playing that at the beginning of each, when I get ready to start my journey with another dog and another litter, or you tell them my whole story. I start out with that particular video. Cause it's only like 25 seconds, mm. but he knew what my focus was from day one. So I gave them the down payment and I'm waiting on Stella to have enough girl. I was a third pick in the litter. I, I, I wasn't going first or second. I did not, not have that type of money to have the first or second pick. So I got a third pick and I wanted a female. The first couple of litters that Stella had, she didn't have enough girls. I think they even did one on Dog Dynasty where uh, the lights went out. And Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I was supposed to get a girl off of that particular litter, and Stella was in uh, labor at that time. So uh, a couple of puppies were lost off that litter, but I, I had to wait another six months. And uh, that I think that litter in October of 2017, she had Kong. Uh, Netflix, Clip, Clifford, the Big Red Dog, all of those are litter mates. Mm-hmm. So mentally, Eric, I checked out when there was no girl available, so I didn't really look much more into it except for to know I, I wasn't getting what I wanted at that time. Right. Okay. Another six months. And you know, it's longer than six months because after they have those puppies, you still have to wait another two months for them to be old enough to even leave the litter. Mm-hmm. Now we're moving into a year that I've given a payment and I'm waiting on a girl. So she had another litter and she only had two girls. And the first two people, again, I was a third pick. They took the first two good. They took the only two girls. Mm-hmm. So that left a lot of boys. And I was like, oh, man, I, oh we got to do something here. So Lisa, she thought, and she came to me with an idea. She said, we don't have another female off Stella and Hulk's litter. But we have a female off Stella, uh, off Hulk in Portia's litter. I'm like, well, who was Portia? She sent me a picture of this beautiful blue, I won't say blue brindle, but she was in between bluish, brownish color and just caught my eye. Like, I a, said, well, like a seal color type bitch? There you go. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I said, ah, all right. Well, you know, she said, how about this? Since I couldn't provide you that girl off Stella's litter, how about I provide you a boy? Mm-hmm. You throw a couple extra uh, dollars in, I'll give you a boy and a girl. Mm. So I wrote that check before you could even imagine. Stella had her litter on the 26th of June. Portia had her litter on the 8th of, I'm sorry, the 6th of July. Okay. So um, when I... <laughs> If, if you will, for lack of better words, in dog in the dog world, when you're lying, greedy, because Sasha Marley is the only. When I got the boy, I named him Marley. Sasha was Sasha. She already had her name. Sasha was a brown brindle. Is a brown brindle female. She's 115 pounds. When I got her, she was very tiny. And I'm looking at these dogs like, mm, you sure these are hawk puppies? They're awfully small, man. And I, I'll send you pictures on the day the, the day I got them. And the pictures that she sent me, I was like, oh, boy, I, mm, I thought they were going to be a bit, little bit larger. Mm-hmm. Man, as months and weeks start passing by, I blink my eyes and these dogs just start sprouting. I mean, they, they uh, one thing that Marlon told me, he said, bro, trust the process. These dogs going to get bigger before you know it. And sure enough, when I blink my eyes, Marley always had big paws. But he started growing into his paws before you can even blink your eyes, man. It happened so fast. I noticed, like, uh, his dogs are very, very chill around the around the kids and everything. Are they natural protectors, or do you got to train them, train that into them? Oh no, they they are definitely natural protectors. They're they're protectors not only of territory but of people who who they have been with for a long period of time. You know how I know? Because I got Hawk's son and daughter. 
Mm. And I got his granddaughters and grandsons. Now, did you have to, did you have to instill that into them or did, did they just handle their business in certain situations? I've never trained them for protection. It just happened naturally. They do well under stress. They do well under, uh, with, uh, we call it distractive training. You know, okay. you have items and dogs and people around, uh, loud noises. You can give a command and that dog will sit right there. You can bounce ball, their favorite toys in front of them. Stormy was a franchise dog that uh, Marla and I uh, shared. Um, and she was only 70 pounds. Now, she she produced, she's from Space and Netflix. So, uh, you know, Space is 70 pounds. So right. she produced 70 pound uh, female and she bred with Marley. They have some uh, beautiful puppies that are nowhere near Marley's size, mm -hmm. but you know, very. I, I'm gonna send you some pictures and videos of these dogs because people think that every dog that we have are these ginormous dogs. And I say it's it all. You have to let me know what you want, and then I can work accordingly to whatever pattern you want, color mm -hmm. you want, size you want. Right. I, my major was genetics and uh, I, I'm sorry, my major was biological sciences in uh, Northern Illinois University. Uh, study emphasis in genetics, uh, honors genetics in high school. So I had an opportunity to be exposed to probabilities of the outcome of litters. Right. You know, roll, roll my genetics over into this dog breeding thing. Okay. So um, I can look at a pair of dogs and match them up and say, well, this might gift you this or that, or this might not work out at all. I would, I would not breed these two. Mm -hmm. I got, I got it. I got some, I got surprisingly impressed with not only the intelligence, cause there's a lot of, uh, smart dogs, a lot of intelligent dogs. There's a lot of dumb dogs out here too. Mm -hmm. I mean, some dogs, you just like, man, this dog just does not get it. Of These course. dogs, in their eyes and see human faces the only thing they can't do is talk okay i got and you. see those those dogs are smarter than we are they right. know what we, but we can't understand what they want what separates that program from the rest as far as um as far as your program the dark dynasty program what separates that from other xl bullies um, I really haven't gotten too much other people's XL bullies to even notice much of a difference because uh, you have some dogs that are intelligent. This with this particular bloodline, these dogs the the, the amount of intelligence and the amount of their, their their temperament is what separates them from me because I have videos that I've recorded that people when they see the size of Marley who is Hawk's son. Marley is 160 pounds, so quite naturally walking up on him, you're like, whoa! Right. You know, so uh, you want to kind of damper that down a little bit. You, you're going to always be amazed by his size, but his temperament is what makes you engage physically with him, like rub him on the head or, you know, uh, 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 give him a pat on the butt or whatever the case may be. Um, I've had a small video where I've shown six- and seven-year-old kids laughing with him playing and i've had a grown man come through here whoa scared to come around the corner and when he see him like ducking his head i'm like dude we just had kids like baby kids around this dog you, you know the, and the temperament never changes i've had elderly i've had other dogs I, I, my my ex-wife had a very small uh white dog that was in the house and we would give them all bones to play with and the bigger dogs would go over to the white dog and Marley and Sasha would try to play with the dog and the dog would lash out at them. You know, smaller dogs have Napoleon complex. So even with the dog lashing out at Marley, who can just swallow the dog in one bite? The dog grabbed Marley's lip and we kind of get to separate them and Marley just walking about his, walk on about his way. Now he licked his little wound on his lip with his tongue and Marley carried on because he's not used to fighting he's not used to acts of aggression and so he separated himself from that dog when that dog did that he said i guess you don't want me to play with his bump now generally if you have a dog that bites another dog there will be a fight mm -hmm. so i've witnessed myself never see them outlash at another dog and let me share some of the even more 
crazy about this more recently, Eric. I had a letter on September 12th, mm. September 11th. Sasha and her daughter, Bella, both had litters. Mm. Now, I'm here by myself. My sister came in from California. So even with that being said, when you have those very new puppies within hours of each other, you you have to have them in the same room because you can't afford to leave them for long periods of time because they'll get squashed. Right. So we put a small partition up in my living room and we had both mom and daughter in there. We had both litters in there mm -hmm. and they coexisted. I've had guys who've never seen pit bulls before in the room with mom, with the puppies, rubbing on mom, picking up the puppy. Never been around pit bulls before. And these are different dogs that I'm naming that are sisters. They're all sisters and daughters of Sasha and Mark. So their temperament goes straight through with no problems at all. And again, when Sasha and Marley and Sasha and Bella had their litters, we, they had 10 puppies total. We mm -hmm. were able to take five and five. We didn't care what combination they were. And we put them on mom's nipples. So we had mother, uh, we had grandma nursing her grandbabies. Mm -hmm. We had mom, Bella, uh, the daughter of Sasha nursing her brothers and sisters. So no fighting, no nothing. That That's what separates it with me is that these dogs are so freaking, their temperament is so phenomenal. That, and this is something that people would have to see them, see for themselves in person, which I have on video. Mm -hmm. I made sure I made a, a record of that because that's history. You right. can't have those big dogs around each other, mm -hmm. interchanging puppies and, you know, all this stuff that without them fighting. Right. There was not one fight that's what allowed me to be able to have these multiple litters like that Eric so I don't know other litters that can do that other kennels that can do that but I know this litter with Hawks bloodline I've never had a problem I would say it's XL bully here at law dog kennels um, because that's what I can account for with the breedings that I do because I had with the Merle breedings that I do I do that with uh, uh, bully that is from a uh, Houston exotic house. Uh, Juan Valdez or John Paul, as I call him, JP. He's a, uh, he has a, a bully who's a blue tri Merle. I uh, got some everything in his blood and he's producing ridiculous amounts of dogs and ridiculous amounts of patterns and colors. And so that's my two time Hulk female uh -huh. friend with, uh, exotic Houston exotic house uh, 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 stood and that's why you see these Merle dogs popping up all of a sudden that are two time home yeah. because do an outside line breed now that's not DDK that's law dog killers okay so I also did a, so you, you'll see some blue uh, puppies in a different litter that's from another sire from uh, uh, South Carolina to be exact and um my area yeah his name is uh daquan rivera and his dog's name is chino chino is a 130 pound male big wide male and we bred her with my 144 pound female now my female is, has stella beat by about four pounds that's marlin's female but she's two times hawk every every female i have out here that i breed the strength of the gene pool is very strong because Marley and Sasha are Hulk's son and daughter. They have brother and sister. And they're the ones who produce all of these big female and keep sh strengthening the gene pool. Mm -hmm. So if I did decide to integrate a Merle pattern, the strength of the, the, the strength of the bloodline of Hulk is there twice. You have the two-time Hulk with the Merle factor in there. You have the two-time Hulk with the tri factor in there. Or whatever I decide, whatever pattern I decide to integrate, I get a puppy off that litter and I no longer need those sires outside because now I can go right back again with my kennel because I have a beautiful chocolate Merle mm -hmm. puppy, Tuco, Tuco Salamanca, like off of uh, the movie Breaking Bad, if you remember that. Kept little Tuco. Tuco is approximately, he is four months, I think he's about 48 pounds. You don't. You never breed a Merle to a Merle. I'm glad you said that. We. Uh, that's something I. Because again, like I was saying before, 
uh, I studied genetics very closely and I, I studied how mutations because Merle actually is a mutation. Of course. And then if anybody Googles that, they'll see that that's a mutation. Some people have fallen in love with that mutation because of the crazy exotic colors, spots and patterns that the dogs have or whatever. But if you do it carefully, you can have some brilliant litters that come right. out. But when you get sloppy, you, you breed Merle or Merle or brother and sister, you know, litter mates or whatever, you run into a very, very, very tricky situation because now you have this litter, half of them have all of these issues, health problems, blind, deaf, or whatever the case may be, dealing with the, uh, the Merle portion because you, just like I have two-time Hulk, now you have two-time Merle. Right. Two Merle is the two-time mutation. Think about that. It limits what you're able to breed after that. Yeah. It could get very tricky. But my recommendation is to know your genetics, do DNA testing, see the likelihood of this dog's uh, history and how their DNA and family uh, are with the uh, Merle pattern. And once you figure that out, you got a choice to make. If it's a good bloodline with you know really no, not many birth defects or whatever, Go ahead. But if you see a dog that's had litter after litter of consistent stillborns, birth defects or whatever, why in the world would you go ahead and continue to breed that dog? Because they chase the dollar. I don't chase the dollar, bro. I chase the beauty. I chase the temperament. I chase the uh, 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 size. I do. I chase the size. But I make sure it makes sense before I make it though, because I already got size here. There's no need for me to go out and try to find size because I have that here. What, what I, I do when I do integrate uh, uh, stood from outside, I do my due diligence. Mm -hmm. Everybody do their due diligence. So I guess that's really what I'm trying to say is that before you get into something like that, check the dollar, do your due diligence because it's going to backfire on you. Mm -hmm. What I noticed about Dark Dynasty, as far as Marlon is concerned, is he wants a personal family protector. I want the same temperament, but to a certain point, because this this is my take on protecting my home. If someone has a gun coming to my house and baby my home, my dogs cannot block a bullet. Mm -hmm. I can't block a bullet. But I guarantee you this, I've had a dog shot by someone before and did not survive. Mm -hmm. So allow that to happen again. One of the main things about me being a deputy sheriff is that I do have guns here. So if they let me know that they're in the driveway and a person has a gun and coming to do damage or intend to do damage, the threat to be eliminated, first and foremost. You know, I had a support because all you had to do as a deputy sheriff make one phone call and have this place swamped. Mm -hmm. But in the time being before somebody, before the police gets here, um, I need to be able to protect these dogs because these dogs rely on me to protect them as well because a, a dog bite for somebody with a gun doesn't matter because they'll shoot that dog before the dog even have a chance to bite. Him. So with me, I got best of both worlds. I have dogs that let me know somebody's in my driveway. If they happen to make it inside, they get shot. If I don't have my gun on me, yes, my dogs can protect the house. But it's that gun factor from the intruder, Eric, that I'm more concerned about than anything. So. Mm -hmm. You can protect it. You can tra tra train a dog to protect you in so many shape, form, or fashion, but the intruder does not have rules. That's something I learned in the academy. They don't. They don't have rules. So when they come in, they're not coming to play fair. And if they have a gun, they don't have rules as to who they're going to shoot and who they're not going to shoot. So I have to make sure I, I'm e either matching what they have or have more than what they have. Which is I got a ton of guns around here try it if you want to 100 percent. i respect that now in your opinion where would you rank the xl bully the dark dynasty dog to be exact where would you rank that to the belgian malinois oh boy i'm i'm kind of biased yeah because i live with these dogs and breathe every heartbeat you know, every, every everything that when you get it, I, I, don't, I don't know how their temperament is. I know how their intelligence is, intelligence is. But the temperament to me is what separates a lot of dogs. 
Mm. Because if you, if you get that dog around another dog that bites them on the lip when they're trying to play with the bones, you know, that go, that theory goes out of the window. And now my question is answered. But I don't, I don't have to see that with my dogs in order to know they can go to a, a dog park, a doggy park, and not have a problem. You know, of course, people think with their size, they'll run away and grab their little dogs. But my dog around there playing with water just like any other dog, playing with toys just like any other dog, and not showing any signs. Of, now, you may have some other dogs in there that try to attack my dog. And that's the crazy thing about it, man, is that just because these dogs' size is so large don't mean that they have to have a temperament that goes along with it aggressively. Yeah. So, I mean... I see what you mean. You have to live with these dogs and see them on their worst days and see them on their best days consistently in order to be able to formulate a, a, a true opinion because any other dog breed, I, I, I really can't vouch for because I don't live with them. Right. No, the only reason I ask is because I know um, I know Marlon has Malinois, and if an XL bully can get the job done, that's great. But do they really have what an American Pitbull Terrier has, or even better yet, what a Belgian Malinois has as far as personal protection? Do they have that no quit? Like that's that's what I'm trying to like lock down by talking to you is. Um, have your dogs ever been in a situation that they actually had to do or die, get it done? Yeah, no, not my, my dogs. I, I got a, a half acre backyard that's enclosed with a privacy gate. People don't even know that these dogs are here most of the time. You, so you can pass my house up look like a regular house with no dogs. They play out in the backyard, so they don't. They have very little contact uh, with any other dogs in uh, or any other. You know, people come through here all the time because they want to have the Marley experience. Right. The Marley yeah, is yeah. coming to see Marley's size and get wild by his size or whatever. But so, the, and, and, and another thing too with me, Eric, I, I know other dogs carry diseases. You know, they carry Bordetella and all this stuff. That yeah, have. yeah, of course. I, I'm kind of closed with people bringing dogs in here. <laughs> yeah. Um, new litters because my new litters are three weeks old, a couple of days old are not vaccinated. Right. So I, I got I, I will never have a chance to see that because I'm I'm so private with these dogs. Unless you're gonna buy a puppy or come through here and see the Marley experience, I, I, I can't allow dogs over here. So that that's one thing I'll never see. Thank God. The things that a Malinois or Shepherd would do, do you think the XL bully can do it? Search and rescue, apprehension. Absolutely. Okay. Based off of pure intelligence. Okay. Based, and again, Eric, I, I want to invite you through here because even if you're here, if you're here for a couple of days, you can see a pattern of their behavior. If you're here for a couple of hours, it's hard to kind of see a pattern of behavior. Right. So you only see them for a short period of time. And if they're on their best behavior, you're like, oh, that was a good visit. But yeah. when you opportunity to see them mingle amongst themselves, get opportunity to mingle with human beings mm -hmm. and, and see it for about a day or so, a day or two, you say, oh, I get it now. I see how they interact with each other and I see how they interact with humans, which is very important to me for them to be show dogs because my dogs are show dogs. Mm -hmm. I, I, and, and in order for me to sell puppies, I have to have my dogs be very accommodating when people come through here. Right. So so you would label them show dogs before working dogs? Yep. Okay. My my dogs that I have over here are definitely show dogs. I don't do work. I don't have a need to do working dogs. Okay. I have a working gun. 